富士康一个工厂养活。Foxconn's factory once supported an entire city, but now it's leaving Zhengzhou. Recently, China's customs authorities released import and export data for 31 provinces for the first quarter, showing a sharp 23.4 percent drop in Henan, a major player in foreign trade. The reason? Foxconn, which assembles products for Apple, is speeding up its exit from Zhengzhou. In the first quarter, Foxconn's export volume fell by 58. Percent, causing a nearly 40% drop in Zhengzhou's total exports and a 23% decline in Henan's overall import and export figures. Foxconn is accelerating its departure from China, moving to Vietnam and India. As one of the world's largest electronics manufacturers, Foxconn's exit from Zhengzhou has a significant impact on the local economy. By relocating its production lines to Vietnam and India, Foxconn is seeking a more competitive production environment. These countries likely offer lower production costs, better policy support, or a more stable investment environment. Foxconn's move from China is also influenced by Apple's gradual reduction of its reliance on the country. Foxconn is now starting to leave Henan, making a strong push towards Vietnam and India. Although Vietnam lacks sufficient electricity and India's heat is unbearable, Foxconn is determined to set up these two countries. Recently, they announced plans to invest in two factories and establish new industrial parks in Vietnam. In the first quarter, Henan's mobile phone shipments plummeted by 60% year over year, a steep decline driven by Foxconn's accelerated departure from Zhengzhou. Foxconn's export volumes fell by 58% in this period, leading to a nearly 40% drop in Zhengzhou's total exports and a 23% decline in Henan's overall import and export figures. This man mentioned that Foxconn's exit from Zhengzhou and its move to Vietnam and India is closely related to Apple's global production strategy, impacting various aspects and trends. Factors such as trade tensions between China and the U.S. and geopolitical concerns have prompted Apple to diversify its production across more countries, reducing risks and dependency. Foxconn, as an Apple contractor, is consequently affected. As Foxconn leaves China, Apple is significantly adjusting its global supply chain strategy. Recently, the company has rapidly expanded its production capacity in India, including the latest Pro series, signaling a clear intent to reduce reliance on China. Nikkei Asia reported that shortly after starting production of high-end iPhones in China, Apple began mass production of the latest iPhone models, including the Pro series, in India. This move highlights Apple's efforts to establish a supply chain outside of China. According to two informed sources, Apple's actions are aimed not only at reducing the risks associated with geopolitical uncertainties, but also at reflecting the significant technological progress made by India's supply chain in recent years. Previously, Apple primarily produced its latest and high-end iPhone models in China, while Indian suppliers focused on assembling lower-end or older iPhone versions. However, this situation has recently changed as Apple strives to enhance the flexibility of its supply chain. Supply chain data shows that India assembled 30 million iPhones last year, and in just the first half of 2024, production in India has reached approximately 18 million units. These phones not only supply the Indian market but are also exported to other countries, with the majority being shipped to the U.S. Ivan Lam, an analyst at Counterpoint Research, stated that as major brands focus on diversifying production and expanding into the Indian market, India has become one of the main smartphone assembly locations outside of China. Apple is actively expanding its market share in India, with a population of 1.4 billion. The rise in income levels is driving consumer spending. According to Counterpoint Research, smartphones priced at over 400 U.S. dollars. Now make up 10% of India's total mobile phone shipments, compared to just 4% before the COVID-19 pandemic. These high-priced smartphones account for 35% of the total revenue in the smartphone market. On June 23rd, Apple CEO Tim Cook told CNBC that India represents a huge opportunity. Gene Munster, managing partner at Deepwater Asset Management, told CNBC that Tim Cook is laying the groundwork that India can be big or even bigger than China. Apple's strategy in India is not just about selling products; they also aim to make India a significant manufacturing hub to reduce reliance on China. 
Earlier, Bloomberg reported that in the fiscal year 2023, the value of iPhones assembled by Apple in India was estimated to be as high as 14 billion U.S. dollars. This indicates the company's push for regional diversification and a quicker exit from China. According to insiders, up to 14 percent of Apple's devices are now made in India, accounting for about one-seventh of its total production. This shows Apple's urgent need to reduce its long-term dependency on China's supply chain as geopolitical tensions escalate. Although China remains Apple's largest iPhone production base and overseas market, the company's revenue in mainland China has sharply declined. This is partly due to the Chinese authorities' support for competitors like Huawei and the expanded ban on using foreign devices in workplaces. The significant growth in India's manufacturing activities marks a victory for Prime Minister Modi's government. The Modi administration has provided financial incentives to attract high-end manufacturing, including from companies like Apple. The Indian government claims that this manufacturing growth has created 150,000 direct jobs for Apple suppliers. According to informed sources, in the fiscal year ending March 2024, Foxconn assembled nearly 67 percent of the iPhones produced in India, with Pegatron assembling around 17 percent. The remaining iPhones were manufactured at Wistron Corp's factory in Karnataka, southern India, which was acquired last year by India's largest company, Tata Group. Apple's accelerated exit from the Chinese market marks a shift away from long-standing industry practices. This aligns with the company's broader strategy for smartphones, as it seeks new breakthroughs outside of China. Overall, Apple's development in India highlights the country's rise as a manufacturing center. Companies like Tesla, Cisco Systems, and Alphabet's Google are also keen on manufacturing hardware in India. In a report tracking global tech supply chain changes, published in February, Bloomberg intelligence analysts noted that corporate priorities now include geopolitical risks, resilience, and ESG, environmental, social, and governance requirements. The report also mentioned that ending the near-exclusive dependence on China's tech supply chain is costly and complex, but with China's market appeal declining, finding an alternative is necessary. Last year, Apple opened its first two flagship stores in India, located in New Delhi and Mumbai, and plans to open three more by 2027. Analyst Stephen Seng wrote in the report, the trend of diversifying the tech supply chain away from mainland China is becoming unstoppable. Apple's sales in China continue to decline. According to a July 25th report by Voice of America, market research firm Canalis released a new study showing that Apple's market share in China shrank by two percentage points in the second quarter of 2024 due to fierce competition from rivals while Canalis, a market research firm based in Singapore, did not provide specific shipment numbers for Apple, its data indicated that Apple's market share in China dropped to 14% in the second quarter of 2024, down from 16% in the same period in 2023. This decline caused Apple's ranking in the Chinese smartphone market to fall from third to sixth place. In the first quarter of 2024, Apple's iPhone sales in China fell by 19%, marking the worst performance for iPhones in China since 2020. To boost sales, Apple has ramped up discounts this year to attract customers. In May, Apple launched a major promotional campaign in China, twice the size of its February campaign, with some iPhone models being discounted by as much as 2,300 yuan. For the past decade, China has been Apple's most important sales market after the United States, accounting for about 20% of its total sales. However, iPhone shipments in China have been declining continuously this year. Why have sales fallen? Shui Qian, a senior director at market research firm Tech Insights, believes the main reason for the sharp decline is the escalating tension in U.S.-China trade and technology relations. If geopolitical pressure doesn't ease significantly, it will be difficult for iPhones to maintain their position in the Chinese market, which could result in huge losses for Apple as a U.S. company. Another reason for the decline in iPhone sales is the Chinese government's ban on using foreign brand smart devices for work, citing enhanced data security management. Last September, reports surfaced that authorities had warned officials to avoid using foreign brand devices like iPhones for work or bringing them into workplaces. They also urged banks and other state-owned enterprises to switch to domestic software and promote local semiconductor manufacturing. 
Analysts suggest that the Chinese government has long aimed to replace American software and hardware with domestic products, and this ban could directly impact Apple's market share. Regarding China's emphasis on data security, Professor Xie Tian from the School of Business at the University of South Carolina, Aiken, argued that the rationale is unfounded. He said Apple has actually agreed to set up a data center in Guizhou, China, where user data is stored locally. So there's no issue of the U.S. government using Apple's technology to access Chinese consumer data. On the other hand, the Chinese government is indeed collecting data from Western consumers using platforms like TikTok. He added, "The Chinese government's market intervention is obvious. Huawei is not just a simple civilian phone company; it's closely linked to defense-related communication infrastructure. The Chinese government will never let Huawei fail. Moreover, they hope to use civilian product sales to support military communication technology. So they are politically motivated to suppress Apple and support Huawei." In addition, the economic downturn has dampened enthusiasm for iPhones among Chinese consumers. Fang, a resident of Zhengzhou, said that in the past people used iPhones because of their good camera quality. Although they were a bit expensive, it was easier to make money back then, so everyone wanted to own an iPhone. But now, with the economy struggling, iPhones are still quite expensive, and the government is strict about iPhone usage. Some places don't allow it, so she's using a domestic brand phone. For a long time, the Chinese government has blocked Chinese apps and tech companies. Apple has taken various actions in China to comply with the Chinese government's increasing censorship and so-called data security regulations. In 2017, Apple faced criticism for removing dozens of VPN apps from its Chinese app store. In 2020, after Chinese officials cracked down on games without government licenses, Apple also removed thousands of gaming apps. Last year, Apple was forced to take down some apps similar to ChatGPT, while Beijing implemented local regulations for generating. AI services, according to a July 12th report by the Washington Post, Apple stated in its human rights policy that we believe in an open society where information flows freely. However, Apple maintains close ties with the Chinese government and says it must comply with local laws, even if they are laws of China's authoritarian regime and contradicts the company's human rights commitments. A recent report on Apple's Chinese app store reveals the consequences. The article criticizes the Chinese App Store as the most isolated in the world. According to the new report, out of the 108 most downloaded apps globally, 55 are unavailable in China, and nine others can be downloaded but are blocked by Chinese authorities. The report also found that none of the 10 most downloaded apps globally are available to Chinese users. The list of censored apps is long and continues to grow. VPN, privacy, and digital security apps are among the primary categories of apps that are unavailable in China. In addition, social media and communication apps are often removed from the App Store at the request of Chinese authorities. The apps are removed in response to reports they consider harmful to Chinese politics and current events. The report also notes that many religious apps are unavailable for download in the App Store. Not only those related to Tibet and Buddhism, but also apps for Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Moreover, some developers choose to voluntarily take down their apps. For example, a Uyghur app developer decided not to release his app, fearing it could become a target for Chinese authorities, potentially endangering users caught by local police. The article criticizes Apple, noting that while the company claims it must comply with local laws in China, even when it disagrees with them, it could be more transparent about how it handles direct requests from China to remove apps from the App Store. Currently, Apple provides total figures but does not disclose which specific apps China has requested to be taken down. Making this information public would be an important step in fulfilling the company's stated commitment to openness. Amid the ongoing economic slowdown in China and other factors, more foreign companies are leaving the country. Data released by China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange on August 9th showed that foreign direct investment in China's international balance of payments decreased by 14.8 billion U.S. dollars from April to June this year, and by about 5 billion U.S. dollars in the first six months. According to Bloomberg, after foreign investment in China reached a record 344 billion U.S. dollars in 2021, it has been declining in recent years. The continued slowdown of China's economy and escalating geopolitical tensions have accelerated the pace of foreign capital leaving the country. 
Earlier data from China's Ministry of Commerce revealed that foreign direct investment in China in the first half of this year hit its lowest level since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. At the same time, China's outbound investment has reached a record high. In the second quarter of this year, Chinese companies invested 71 billion dollars overseas, a year-on-year -year increase of over 80 percent. In recent years, Chinese companies have been increasing their overseas investments, funneling money into emerging projects such as electric vehicle and battery factories. The latest data from China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange also shows that an abnormal indicator measuring China's trade surplus continues to grow, reaching a record 87 billion U.S. dollars in the second quarter. According to a report by Nikkei Asia, in the second quarter of this year, the amount of money flowing out of China, particularly for factory construction and mergers and acquisitions, exceeded the amount flowing in. This marks the second time since statistics began in 1998 that negative growth has occurred, with capital outflow surpassing the 12.1 billion U.S. dollars seen from July to September 2023. Professor Sun Guoxiang from the International Affairs and Business Department at Nanhua University explains that the continuous decline in foreign direct investment in China is primarily due to the shrinking domestic market, issues with how the Chinese government treats foreign investors, and geopolitical and economic factors, particularly the restructuring of supply chains. He added that foreign investments have greatly contributed to the introduction of new technologies into China and the creation of massive job opportunities for the Chinese population. The departure of these foreign companies is exacerbating the already difficult situation for China's economic development, affecting both domestic and international economic cycles. Sun Guoxiang believes that under the current geopolitical and economic conditions, the Chinese government lacks the ability to implement any policies that would turn things around. He asserts that China's economy is severely fragmented and requires comprehensive structural and systemic reforms, including in its economic and political systems.